Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what day you may find out, certain people not like what a spagat thing now. Makes true me I do it like Nike, but me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard them a spite me, me just a go and do me thing now. Me just a do it like, just a do it like Nike. Me just a do it like Nike. Me just a do it like Nike. Me just a do it like Nike. Them one pies in me, show me thing up. Pass me on the back where you did that, when they think tough. No Talking Heads with Lottie is brought to you by ML Foods Limited, the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Threads, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Naughty Journeys, Percy's Island Games, Scotia Bank, and Tropical Gyros. Everyone talk a smack a thing now Bex throw me a do it like Nike But me not fear no guy now No matter how hard they must fight me Me just a go and do it Me just a do it like Nike 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 if I tell you the truth, if I mean need a fresh to the top and again, them said the flow and God live my mind need Jesus. Girls call cookies when my mind need river. Yeah, yeah. when my frost, they can't stand me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Game excellent, point black, step on Mr. Chin like a Chinese teacher. Yeah, every bad mind fraud, them is this. Them parents yeah. think corrupt, so them are negative. Uh, How much longer you got yet from people? You know, see you're not benefit. These cars with the jits and say, From what day you may find? Certain people don't like me Everyone talk a smaga thing now Big throw me, I do it like Nike But me not fear no guy now No matter how hard they must fight me Me just a go and do me thing now Me just a do it like Nike 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 I know it like, like it. Hey, August 11th edition of Talking Heads is on and popping your boy Naughty and your company right up until 6 p.m. And we are live, Duncan Dunn's uh, East Street South location, getting it in, running on Duncan right into the weekend. And of course, you know, I got to remind you, you get your summer sipping right at Duncan with their new strawberry cheesecake iced lattes, all right? You definitely got to check one out today, paired with a delicious strawberry frosted donut or maybe one of your favorite uh, sandwiches here at Duncan. It is all good. All right? So be sure to check out that strawberry cheesecake latte. That, that's the hot lick right now for the summer at Duncan, and it's available for you at all of your Duncan locations. Downtown Bay Street, Paradise Island, Palmdale, Bernard Road with the drive through East Street South with the drive through where we're at right now. Call Michael, the newest location, and at the airport, pre-clearance, post-clearance, and arrival, so no reason for you not to be running on Duncan. And like I said, we're live, but we're going to open up the lines today so you can chime on in. And we got lots to talk about, obviously. And you know how to chime in. All right? Lines are open in New Providence, 323-6232-325-4316-326-4259. Alaco, Grand Bahama, Andres, any one of the family islands, toll free, 242 242- 300 5720 Text line powered by BTC 422 GR96. That's 422 4796. Stream us live. Take us wherever you want to go. GuardianTalkRadio.com. That's GuardianTalkRadio.com. All right. Now, got that out of the way. You know how to chime in. Let's get your trivia coordinated before I open up the lines because I want you in a good place, in a good space as we get in. And uh, like I say, we got lots to talk about. But before I get there, I want to make sure you're in a good place. All right. Now, let, let's see what we're working with today. Because I've been beating you all all week. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. 
Wow. <laughs> this is a good one. Recent survey of 100 Bahamian homes. The survey revealed that 68% still have one of these in the home. And out of those homes that still have, you know, one of them in the home, 21% of them are working. What is it? That's your brain teaser. You got between now and the news and the top of the five o'clock hour to get your answers in. All right. Will you work on that? I'm going to work on this. The headliners. Who are us making headlines in the 242? All brought you, of course, by Fine Threads. Be sure to check them out both locations. Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, the flagship store, and the Southwest Shopping Plaza location. Both of those locations available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. New arrivals in stock right now. So be sure to check them out. And, of course, you can always check them out online, findthreads.com. That's findthreads.com. Do your shopping online, then arrange for pickup in any one of those convenient five thread locations. All right, let's check out what's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian News and Views that Matter since 1844. But before we get to that, we got a call. Let's go to the phone lines. I think JJ's on the phone. What's happening, JJ? Hey, no, JJ. All good, brother. What's going on with you? I'm fine. And I tell you, come by the base today, man, and, and, and bring some of those shakes, man. Some of people, 18 people here right now, man. Listen, JJ, you know, if we could do something, we could do it right. Now, I got no problem with getting you the shirts. I got to know it's 18. Next, thing, next week when I talk to you and I get down there, I, I want it to be 118. Well, you come, all the Marvin and be everybody be here, man. And 80% of the guys know you, man. Yeah, man, we got to get out there, though, J.D. That's the most important thing, man. I mean, I'm glad to know that people are looking at it from a national perspective rather than from a party perspective. But we do have to, to take a stand and try to take our country back, man. We need better. We know better. We have to know. We the, need to do better. We have to know. See, I, I just been in the hood. Wait, no, I, I use the ground. You know, a lot of people hating. The only people I see happy in this country is the Jamaicans, the, the, the Nigerians, the Africans, the Chinese. Everybody's making money besides behemoths. I don't know what this government did. How are you giving the people all the work for mess? Where is making mess? Better money to show for these things. No, these behemoths people are hiding. People can't eat. People ain't got a place to sleep. They ain't been in the houses. They ain't been in the government apartment rental. Warm a car in the acre. We need to fire everybody for acre. The thing said they're in the park. What kind of country is this if you want? Huh? If I had to sell the fire everybody in the acre, and the fire the whole resort company, they for a $500 million, my tax base money. I'm banking the mamas, I don't pay the money back. These politicians, passes and all the bunch of jokers, man. No, these are money. The guarantee hey. loan from school. No, these are money. You know, I don't the choir, know what, what no, Huh? I say, you preaching to the choir. These are questions yeah, here, every day Bahamians have. Every, the, every day Bahamians want to know the answers to them. We can't get them. No, these. When it's to me, the end of the topic, I give it. I say to I demand to do my research. When I called and talked to her for over 15, 20 years, then Lennon's had a man with Ministry of Aviation and all them stuff, transport. The Americans give us our airspace money now, you know. One woman called to talk to her and say, You see what JJ's saying? She has to get his smartphone to all people business, put some business and, and do garbage. I am a behemoth nationalist man. I love this country. I told her I had no idea I wanted to go fight for this country. What happened to Luby George and Fred Smith and that judge who, who subbed and George? Let them go to Haiti. Not my beliefs, brothers and sisters. Now let me ask you one question. If the Haitian killed one abuser, what was so it now? What do you think will happen in Nassau and them shanty town? You see, these people be doing all, sign all kind of dumb treaties and be being people doing all of these kind of things. If they don't do something right in this country, you know, they're being of a serious, serious civil war in this country. I hang up on this one. Bye. And JJ, you've been saying it for a while. And a lot of times you write with, with, with what you say early on, and I really hope it don't get to that. I pray it don't get to that. Because we don't need that. All that we got going on and all that we got to change, we don't need that kind of, uh, you know, element thrown into the equation. All right, let's check out the uh, the headlines. Who are us making headlines in the 242? Brought to you, of course, by Fine Threads, who's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian. News and views in matter since 1844. New concerns on citizenship grants. 
And I must tip my hat to the leader of opposition, Mr. Michael Pintard. He has is, is been, you know, like a, a real pit bull on this. He's not letting this one go. He's held the, this administration accountable in the House on numerous occasions. But obviously, this is something that, that resonates with all Bahamians. Opposition leader Michael Pintard last night read the contents of a purported email written by Director of Immigration Keturah Ferguson to Minister of Immigration Keith Bell and Permanent Secretary uh, in the Ministry of Labor and Immigration Cecilia Strawn on July 13th, 2022, about people being sworn in as citizens of the Bahamas without renouncing the citizenship of their countries. Now, hold on. Come on now. Didn't, didn't we make two pinders? that are part of this administration renounce their citizenships because they had dual citizenship in order to run? I hope they did. And the email read, Good afternoon, P.S. Strawn and Minister Bell. It has been brought to my attention that the department has been swearing in individuals without uh, renunciation, contrary to the requirements of the Bahamas Nationality Act, Chapter 190. Please see attached. Kindly advise under what legal grounds are we covered by not following the law. I await your urgent response. Pintard read the email during a free national movement town hall meeting on immigration. He said it was just the tip of the iceberg. Pintard again pointed to reported deficiencies in the Department of Immigration as reasons why Bell should resign as immigration minister. And, of course, you know, the prime minister last month promised a comprehensive review of the checks and balances regarding how immigration decisions are made in the Bahamas with a view to strengthening them. But Davis' statement did not uh, directly address calls for his immigration minister's resignation. So again, more pontification, more talking. Then you got the, the, the chairman of the party, the, the MP for Fox Hill, and the minister of foreign affairs, a multi-hat wearer in, in that party, saying, you know, there was nothing wrong with the, the actions of Mr. Bell. This is, this is like, this is a topic the Bahamians are not going to let go away. You want to know a topic that elections are won and lost on? This is the kind of situation that elections are won and lost on. And where are the answers? We got a lot of displaced Bahamians, a lot of Bahamians hurting, a lot of Bahamians suffering. But we see carte blanche being uh, given to uh, foreign nationals. Okay. Um, Now, here's a text. Naughty. Here's another one. <laughs> right there on the front page of the Guardian. I'm sure you'll talk about it, but um, patient to meet demand. Okay. <laughs> Texter, I see what you're saying. And Texter says, Naughty, how much tongue does this dude have in his mouth? One day they don't have enough, the next day they do. What's going on? And and it's true. What is the situation? Because according to, to the BPL CEO, Mr. Siobhan Cambridge, said yesterday the company has enough generation to meet demand on New Providence. Nobody ever predicts load shedding, he said, adding that there would be a little room for error. That is not something that we ever look forward to. We have sufficient generation to meet the load. And as in this situation last night, we had issues with one of our largest engines. Even if you have a problem right now, the system operates to drop certain portions of the load. But we have spare engines that we can pick up to run that. It takes five to ten minutes to do that. So somebody may be inconvenienced for five to ten minutes. Now, Mr. Cambridge, that might be what it should be theoretically. But your five to ten minutes is hours to some people. On Wednesday, BPL engaged in load shedding on New Providence after a 25-megawatt unit was shut off for emergency repairs. This administration promised no more load shedding, no more power cuts. BPL bills to go down. They've been wrong on all three. And the Bahamian people suffer while the PM and the CEOs of these corporations pontificate. And I'm sure that power don't go out. What say you guys? Let's, let me check the... Uh, the text lines, wow. But you're all of you all wrong. All of my texts, you all wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. 
No, not to, not a Motorola phone, not a rotary phone, not a fax machine, not a DVD player, not a TV. No, nope, none of the above. Hey, Naughty, I told you, um, you haven't heard from Anton because he was in high profile meetings. He knows everything. Uh, and he still defends this administration. He was more blind than Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, and Andre Bocelli. I'm sorry, I, I sorry for him. He thinks we look like the, the thing with two big ears. He's punch drunk. We've been last Anton pop off. He pop off today. He, 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 I haven't heard from Anton. I hope what is bad with him, but I, I haven't heard from Anton for a minute. You know? But I guess, you know, you can't, in some situations, you, 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 you need to remain silent. Because obviously this is, uh, you know, kind of crazy. Texas, I'll get to you in a second. I got two callers on hold. Let's go to the phone lines. Talking heads. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yes, good afternoon, Naughty. Hey, what's going on, 52? Yeah, you know, I mean, everything normal, you know this, but, uh, New Day same BS, right? No, uh, same is not saying anything new, but I love the lady at immigration who wrote the letter and who they uh, put on suspension, right? She's a truth seeker and a truth teller, but I want to make a quick comment on BP Hell. Uh, there was a gentleman I called last week. I don't know if he called your show, but he was very intelligent. And he gave a little uh, practical concept as to how we can calculate the ambassador and show who's lying or who can output the demand. Now, the thing is, it's very simple. I heard uh, Sayers or somebody, I can't remember, somebody from BPL, they're saying how much megawatts they put out, right? 130-something uh, million megawatts or something like that naughty. And they said that 160 yeah. uh, million megawatts, 130-something megawatts around there, right? Some, some did not yeah, so, so a simple calculation I learned from Ohm's Law in BTVI, right? Uh, from uh, the math teacher, Dr. Butler, right? It was, you know, I would be amperage, and P would be the wattage, and then E would be the voltage, so I equals P over E. And so it would be impractical if we, uh, well, you know, most some most of the houses would be 240. So we, we don't want to use 4, 480 as a division, so we'll use 240. And then it's not, uh, the, the mega, the million watts sound like plenty, but when you convert it to amperage, and then you, you uh, say what the average household use ampacity-wise, then they'll give you a real true picture of what they're outputting, Naughty. I cannot be befuddled by BS. You know, this is very simple calculations. The gentleman it said that they could keep an idea, or like when they import stuff, they could see the average ampacity on the equipment and then give, like, you know, the average house maybe, I don't know, maybe use maybe like 50 amps or so, but even though they love like 100 or 200 amp panels, right? But that's for another day, Naughty. It just, it, you, you can actually solve this problem to see who's putting out what news lying. But uh, as to the... The problem with immigration and corruption, and but that's off the father Sebastian Campbell. He taught me religious knowledge at SJC, right? I always, a strong statue of a man. I always looked up to him, and he always, you know, it's good to have a male teacher sometime. I always respected him. He's very burly, he's strong. He always appeared to be a strong man to me as a young man. You know what I mean? He set a great example. I always listen to him, you know. I always listen to him, but again, he's saying nothing new because I spoke about the deification of man, Naughty. And so one thing I hate about politics, right, Naughty, is it makes weak men look strong and effeminate men look strong. They never fight for this country, uh-huh. you know. They never fought for this country, but they suppress the people and, the, and make themselves look strong because of people like Anton and them, goons, political goons, who for the, just, not even just, I'm sorry you don't call his name, but just for, for goons who don't, they conform just for the party's sake. They don't care what the people doing, but they just will continue and go along, I don't know if just to get along, but... It's very inglorious, Naughty. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere. Uh, I would like to see a law enacted, and if they really see it, both PRB and FNM, where on the run-up to elections, the government just cut off all spending because they will take the money and give it to goons and coonies just to get support. We see where they're giving out contracts to migrants now. This country is an inglorious state. And so as to Luby George, whatever he say, brave them doing. So I don't know what's going on in the country, but I listened to Roscoe last week, and Roscoe was painting the picture on the ground in Abaco, right? Right? And I see these people on the ground yep. in all these different islands, but they're being given directives not to go into these shanty towns and not to bother with these migrants, you know. See, we have to go by what we see in Naughty. You see? We can't go by what they say no more. Bless up. Yeah, 52, I appreciate your contributions as always. Always hitting the nail on the head on, on, on several points. And my thing is, I, I saw some... some Info on social media, and I need to double check it uh, to make sure how valid it is. 
but allegedly they're, they're giving away keys to homes in Abaco. So where these homes were built, again, and, and who getting these homes, and how come Abaconians been languishing for going on two years or more and can't get to rebuild their lives? But here we go, people getting homes. And listen, people who need housing and getting homes, I'm all for it. But if we could do something, then we need to do it right. And we can't take care of some and not others. Got to take care of all. And last time I checked, it should be Bahamians first. Let's go to that other caller. Talking Heads, got in Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, number two, Bucket Mouth. Hey, what's going on, number one, Bucket Mouth, Ratchet Joe? Yeah, first, first off the bat, I just picked up my, my, two, my two tickets today for the comedy show tomorrow. Oh, <coughs> don't let me see in that audience, Bob. <coughs> yes, excuse me. I got something for you. I um, I just picked up my two tickets for the heat for the comedy show tomorrow. So if you got upgrade me to get me right on stage, that'll be I'll I appreciate that because I got some. <laughs> well, that's a solid show tomorrow night, there, Sparky. Me, yeah, but I got my tickets. Lawrence so Killebrew, make sure I get in. Major hype. I did. I don't get my ticket. Yeah, I, I got, got my ticket. ticket don't tell me. Don't tell me it's too crowded. I can't get in now. I don't got my ticket. I got my ticket. Mine it almost sell off. You got your ticket. I, you said, I got mine. I got mine. I got two for me and my friend. We done in. So when Cable I come in, you make sure. VIP. You make sure. Tell them Sparky got his ticket. Bring him inside. Now, nah, okay, let's leave work, that alone now. Now, let's see Nori. So, Naughty, I going to be there. I going to be there. And yeah, I got some jokes to tell, too. But anyway, Naughty, Naughty, you know, I can say this. If you give me a moment, I admire you as a talk show host. You don't pull no punches. Thank you, Sparky. You don't pull no punches. It ain't about Naughty. It's about the Bahamian people. With you, it ain't about no PIP, no FNM, no DNA, no whatever it is. Dude. You got some of these talk show hosts, they just take it over talking all about themselves and their mother and their family and their children and thing all day. They tell people to call in to them. They don't answer their phone. And when you come in and you ask them a question, they don't want to talk to you. And I admire you because some people, you know, I don't want to say certain things like, nor do you know just where I'm coming from. But Nori, this is all about the Bahamian people now. This is not about Brave Davis and Minnis and Pintad and all of them. We done gone through all of that. Everybody knows, Nori, you know, Sparky always say, I is a PLP. But I will tell the Prime Minister, Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, this Sparky, something going wrong. Some people, you got to shuffle. Some people got to move. Uh, we can't be going to this over and over every five years. Lord, in my synopsis of the problem we're going through in the Bahamas is that all the foolishness we went through, Dorian, COVID-19, the minister one regime, the, 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 the so-called uh, 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 political one, you know, human England, you refer to them as political wannabes, the, the try to be dictator wannabe. And then lock us down. That we went through all of that foolishness. Now we coming out that the cost of living going up, salaries don't change, and all the Bahamian people are suffering. I suffered. Look here, naughty. The other day, my, my, I live by myself. The fridge on, the fan on, and, and, and maybe the air conditioning because of the heat. My monthly thing used to be one twenty five a month as a single person. Oh, I go on the dog on. Some cash and gold the other day. They tell me my down bill is five hundred and eighty dollars. Hello. I try some people who get in there for twelve hundred and eighty dollars or more. I say hello. Out of nowhere. But, 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 but I ain't got no salary change, so I not yet. I can put something on the bill. I can't pay the five hundred and something. And then they say they have a schedule. The government of the government of the Bahamas, they, they have a schedule of increasing in the bills in the months to follow. 
they already have a schedule of the increases of the bills to follow. The people we buying the oil from, most of them are Bahamian businessmen. We know who they are. We know our politicians have shares in these companies. And they get their dog on. They get their results from the other. So, at the end of the day, when we, 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 we wore them out of the house assembly, they can move off as millionaires. They can live good. We can be still stuck with the bills that I can't pay, my children can't pay, all over the land. How the hell we can get out of this mess? So, 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 naughty. Naughty, I mean, it's like frustration. And you're trying to do your best just to live comfortably in your own country when foreigners come in here and they live better than us. The foreigners get all the concessions, all the land. They live better than Bahamian. And the Bahamians got to pay all the bills. Our grandchildren and everything will be paying these things that we borrow. And we can't go to the prime minister. We can't go to the king of England. We can't go to nobody to help us. I tell you, if we don't watch it like lobsters, we need to help ourselves, Sparky. And we got to start by electing officials and electing politicians that genuinely care about country and Bahamians first and lining their pockets later. That's on us. We still got Sparky, or are you going? Naughty, naughty, All right. naughty. Yeah, go ahead, Spark. Naughty, the last time when the PLB came on my dog on doorstep, they say, Sparky, I am going down to Bay Street to represent you. We can change things to make things better. They said it was going down there to represent me. Next thing I know, they go on down Bay Street, they hold up the Holy Bible in the House of Assembly, and they say, I swear my allegiance to the King of England. Yep. Not- Where does the allegiance really lie? And why does the story change from the campaign trail post-election? And after you've been nominated and after you win, you see, why, why, why does your perspective change? We've seen it happen many a time. All right, Mr. Producer, let's get to the break. Flip side of the break, we'll be back. Lines will still be open. Text, text us, I'll get to your text. And remember, we're live, Dunkin' Donuts, East Street South, getting it in. And, you know, we run it on Dunkin'. And listen, it is all about that strawberry cheesecake latte. You definitely want to check that out. It is all good. You want to cool down this summer? That's that's the ticket right there at Dunkin', and it's all good. The reason why we go into this break is so I can go get a second one. Real talk. Ain't no shame in my game. I ain't lying. So we can go take a break, and I can get another one, and then we'll be back to continue the Friday, August 11th edition of Talking Heads, live from Dunkin' Donuts East Street South, right after this. Juicy fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, and a hot buttery biscuit for only $5. That's genius. Part of the KFC Genius menu, the KFC $5 snack box delivers on flavor and value. Need to feed more than one? KFC's Great Picks has got you covered. Packed with four thighs and four legs, fried to golden perfection, plus four buttery biscuits for only $20. More genius. Hungry for deals? The Genius Menu at KFC. It's finger licking good. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Shop early to get your uniforms and get Janae's Uniform Center's buy four, get one free sale. Free monogrammed and regular school shirts, dry fit and cotton polos, jumpers, skirts, boys long and short pants, PE shorts, underclothes, tights, socks, neckties, belts, sleeping mats, hair accessories and character work desk. Get 50% off backpacks, lunch bags and raincoats. Buy four school shirts, get one free. Buy two skirts, jumpers or pants, get the third 50% off. Need embroidery and monogramming done? Visit Janae's Uniform Center early. Beat the back to school rush. Janae's Chesapeake Road back to school special. Restrict Apply. Tell them. 
Are you ready to win your ship 8,000 in cash and you capture the spirit of the Bahamas with your camera? Scotiabank, in partnership with the Guardian Media Group, invites all youth, amateur, and professional photographers to enter the Celebrate Bahamas 50 Photography Competition. Visit guardiantalkradio.com or bs.scotiabank.com to find out how to enter. Snap those photos and send them in by Friday, August 31st. Let's celebrate our proud nation in photos and win your share 8,000 in cash. Terms and conditions are we're gonna give you a check every week for a year. Percy's Pension Plan, Island Game, keep you in it. Percy's Pension Plan, dream big, we will help you live it. Percy's Pension Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy's Pension Plan, from the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, come play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is. Percy's Island Games, so put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Games. Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all topped with velvety whipped cream and irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Talking Heads continues right now. We are live, Dunkin' Donuts, East Street South location, getting it in 4.45 p.m. is the time. Don't forget at 5, we're talking sports. Let me get uh, to some of the texts. Uh, Naughty 52 is correct. We just airbagging in this country. And goons like Anton, them come on this airbag defending garbage. The people are hurting, but our PM is concerned more about Haiti than us. Naughty Mr. Pintard isn't making any sense. In fact, all these politicians right now aren't making any sense. They need to, to be replaced. Text, I can't read the way you want them to replace, but I, I'll say that they need to be replaced uh, for treason they're committed in this country. I tell you, a lot of Bahamians are disgruntled. The everyday Bahamian is feeling this more than anybody else. Um... You uh, look, look at some more headlines. We're kind of sliding out of that and into the buzz brought to you by John's, to tell you the truth. Um, so let me know what you're buzzing on. <laughs> Naughty Tell Sparky is PLP. Let the fuel hedging plan lapse. Everyone's fuel supplier, best friend, need a couple million more for his next project. Wow. But that was a total bungle at a hedge fund. Okay? And... Like I said, we're feeling it. We are feeling it. None of those folks who we elected to make decisions on our behalf and to make the best decisions, the most beneficial decisions for Bahamians, have dropped the ball multiple occasions. And we are now suffering. So at what point do we, the conk, because we keep electing the same types of individuals that keep doing us the same way, when are we going to take the mallet and start beating people like how they should be beating us. At some point, enough has to be enough. Texas, all of your answers are wrong. They're good, but they're wrong. Motorola phone, rot uh, rotary phone, BTC telephone directory, oven, iron toaster, radio, remote, DVD player. Hot plate, can opener, VCR player, clothes, line, clothes, dryer. Man, oh man. Doorbell, kerosene, lamp, corn grinder, CD player, cassette player, coffee maker, teapot, vinyl record player. Boy, 
y'all, y'all calling them all off except for the one I'm looking for. And when I say it, I promise you, you can pull over and, and stop yourself. You could be so upset. Uh-oh, Naughty. Here's another text. Uh-oh, Naughty. Sparky broke off again. Looks like he's off the reservation again. <laughs> he could be in trouble soon. Let's go back to the phone lines. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? We don't hate you. You're just naughty by nature. What's going on? This naughty by GNN. nature, not because I hate you, GNN. That's how it go. Well, I got that for some out of opinion. <laughs> What's happening, Listen, brother? I just tune in, right? Um, but I, and I, I, I understand from a, a, a voice clip that something almost happened to the Prime Minister yesterday. You know about that? I haven't heard anything to that extent. And you know, with voice clips and social media, yeah, you gotta CNN, be careful. That's, we that's as Bahamians, we like to lie. Yeah, that's why I said, let me ask, you know what I mean? But, uh, but I want to get your WhatsApp number because I've been doing some research over the last two days on this PPL situation. And Naughty, trust me, the clips that were put in with WhatsApp meeting PPL executives and their team is totally different from what the PM, the general manager, and what that lady saying. Totally different. Now, right, I want what Senate, I need you to do? Be all WhatsApp. GNN is yeah. all in line. Mr. Producer, when when we finish talking with GNN, get his number for me, and then I can link you GNN, and I get you in a couple of chat groups when I need you, and we'll go from there. Yeah. I, I, I finished. All right. But listen. Huh. We, 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 the con got to get the mallet. The con gotta, I agree. You know, the con got to be heard this go around. We can't be the con this go around. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Naughty. When Ed Fields used to come on the radio, a lot him and Eric and them, and Ed Fields used to call the him and people silly and stupid, I was really taken aback by that. You understand me? I, he used to upset me. Fast forward to today, let me tell you something. Sorry, I got to say it. The human people are stupid. They dumb. They might not have sugar-coated the it back then. That, he should have sugar-coated it, but you can't knock him for being real. The, 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 listen, that the average is alive and kicking in this country, buddy. Cronyism, the average, silly, dumb, stupid. You call it whatever you want to call it. And that, 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 that's, that's us. That's the human people. You understand? I, I, I sorry, I, I got it. I drop it like how it is. We from Mars. No, no better, do better. Listen. Exactly. If you keep doing something over and over and over with the same results. That's insanity. GNN, they call it insanity. Insanity. The Hamans are stupid. I mean, we sit right here, Naughty. Where I live, Naughty, I just be afraid to sit on my wall because. From the little children up to the big people, fucking little children playing in the road, every last one speaking to you. I, when, when I hop on a, a number seven, eight bus, I can't open my mouth. You know, there is to be afraid in your own country. I can't open my mouth because from the driver right down, everybody speaking to you, naughty, and we just sit here and sit here and talking and talking about FM and PLP and Sparky and Park Pedaling and things, and we just let the country basically gone. We the stupidest people in the world, Naughty. Now let me hook up with this WhatsApp number. All right, man. We'll make sure my producer gets it, but I'll have a good safe weekend, all right? Yeah, man. Same right? to you, man. I hear we got Anton on the phone, so let's go to the phone now. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, Naughty. Good afternoon, Naughty. How hey. you doing? What's going on, Anton? All is well with you and yours? I, I write here, I write here. Just tuning in. Just boy, tuning it seems in. like my texters have conjured you up today, boy. Boy. They won't hear from you. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't catch the earlier ones, but I caught that last text. Sir. Um, uh, look here, text, sir. let me make it clear for you, all right? And don't ever make, make the mistake that you made again in that silly text which you sent. All right? I'm for the Bohemian people, all right? I'm a Bohemian as well, okay? I'm also in the struggle. So don't, don't talk nonsense if you don't know me, okay? Educate yourself first before you make yourself look ignorant sending stupid texts. And I don't normally speak that way, but I need to start speaking that way because you have some real silly people 
who call in, who don't know nothing about me, and who, who don't understand the level at which I communicate, and don't take time to listen to the content, to appreciate what message I'm sending out to my government and to any government of the Bahamas. Okay? But um, um but 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 not on the BPL Mara, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. On the BPL Mara, Nori, look. Bahamians can blame one government to the next, to the next, to the next. That don't change the fact of the matter that the former administration spent around one hundred million dollars of Bahamian tax payer dollars buying seven watt solar engines with the expectation that they would lead to the reduction of of our bills for the end users being the consumers and it is not we have not realized that to date we have not realized that to date I'm, I'm naughty from those machines for purchase they did not equip them properly to perform to the level that they're supposed to perform naughty therefore we were not able to realize the savings um, um, with the tri fuel engine that the government of that day purchased, okay? And so really and truly, Naughty, if we want to lay blame, when you, are, when you are spending, when you are making such a significant purchase using tax dollars, Naughty, you have to be very wise, very prudent, very careful how you spend our money because it's not every year that we're going to be making a 100 or $200 million investment in, in infrastructural um, infrastructural development in our country to advance our country. And when you make those types of purchases, Naughty, they have to be right. We got it wrong purchasing those. But Anton, um, um, pardon me? let me ask you this question. Let me yeah. ask you this question, all right? Mm. Now, I know you're a learned guy. I know you're a smart guy. Mm. And you say that you're Bahamian first, which I believe. Mm. And, and PLP, a close, hard second. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, I'll always be behemoth first. Always. All right. So let me ask you this question. Don't yeah. you think that this current administration and previous administrations, both FNM and PLP, have dropped the ball significantly when it comes to BPL? Considering where we are geographically located, we should have been sold a long time. Look, that, that's, a, that's a very fair and an honest question, Naughty. And, uh, why, the- and why haven't they gone solar? Connect the dots. Because who provides that, that, the fuel? The Homeboy the very, Network. If we keep it at 100 as Bahamians, let's no. call it for what it is. Right. And so, and so, and so if I could answer that, you get me clearly? Yeah, man. Okay. Um, um, I, I respect that question, and I respect people who have the intelligence, the common sense, the decency to have honest dialogue rather than making presumptuous, very silly, ill-informed um, um, comments across the airwaves, such as what some of the texts make, and even some of the callers in TSO make. Look, Naughty, on a trip that I visited, where I visited my brother in the United States of America, I went to California, right? I'm, I'm Naughty. And, and every time we pass these dams where they have um, uh, these uh, um, uh, multifaceted uh, energy, uh, sophisticated energy generators, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, across different parts of California that we visited because we did a lot of driving while I, was, while I was over there. I kept wondering to myself, why is it in the Bahamas that we aren't doing something as sophisticated as what they're doing in California to, to assist with energy production and alleviate with the, 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 the high cost that we experience in electricity? And so to answer your question, Nori, yes, I believe that all Bahamian governments, all, not one, not two, all have dropped the ball where BPL is concerned. And the reason, the number one reason why I say that to you, Naughty, to make it very clear, is we only have one dogged energy production company in this country. One, one energy production company. It is no way in the world one energy production company should be running in the red in our country. We have one energy. And look here, Naughty, people continue to cry for a private energy production company to take over BPL. We don't want that in this country at this time until we put what is necessary in place to get BPL where it needs to be. Because if a private entity comes in, you believe energy production um, and, and cost is expensive right now. In order for them to, and, and you and 
you and I'm um, a uh, critical thinker had a conversation similarly to what I'm talking about right now yesterday because I've, I've been listening audio do I haven't been commenting commenting I've been listening in order for that to happen so much money is gonna have to be invested so much cutting of resources is going to take place behemoths would be crying and wishing for the days that they had a behemoth government but a more efficient a more focused and 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 and, and, and a more strategic an approach behemoth government running BPL because they would be cutting BPL left, right, and center. You wouldn't recognize BPL nor the bills. And after some point, after some point of doing the cuts, of doing the checks, of making the investment, of finding the cash to put into BPL, then we would get to where we need to be in terms of energy cost for the end consumers in our country being more affordable than it ever was in our country. But it is no reason, Naughty, for the number one reason that we only have one energy production company in this country that we all look to. It is no reason why BPL should not be operating in the black in our country. No, no, no God-given, natural, civilized, good order, good thinking reason why it should not be the case to answer your question. And I'll end with that. Thank you for the opportunity, Naughty God. Have a good weekend, Anton. Yes, you too, and continue the good words, my brother. All right, my brother, be safe. All right, let's get to the tax lounge real quick before we get to the break. Um, Naughty, who is the contractor for RM Bill? He hope he don't get any more roofing contracts or contracts ever again. Naughty, the demolition of downtown is a good move, but Mr. PM, you, your MP, and the PM for Abaco just need to go, please. Generalized statements are normally incorrect. Please correct that caller to say that the majority of the Hamans are stupid, not, not, not the entire majority. <laughs> they make these back and forward decisions. All right. Um, Naughty, I'm glad Anton is Bahamian. He says he's Bahamian first. I, I hope it's time. He knows it's time for him to think country first and start wearing yellow. Naughty, here's something to study about Anton. Every time he has a talk show host, can you hear me? He's about to deflect. All right. That's a poker tell. I'll write that down for next time. All right. So make sure we got his poker tell. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, great first hour. Everybody who called in, chimed in, texted in, good stuff. We got to get to the break. Flip side of the break, we'll be in the 5 o'clock hour. I'll be talking sports. And remember, we're live, Dunkin' Donuts, East Street South location, getting it in. And it's all about that strawberry cheesecake latte. Could I be going for a third? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you how good it was after the break. Shavara Local Union, Strict Chani Farms. I don't think I chose farming, I think farming chose me. Winning this award will definitely give us the funding that we need to start our farming season. Most persons who are in the agriculture field realize that at the start of the season, which is in the next couple of weeks, you do always need a bulk of cash. I think we have a great track record for the work that we've been doing in agriculture over the last 10 years. And so when I saw the opportunity for an award like this, I figured, you know what, I should just go ahead and enter. The Agrarian Awards, September 16th. Put your best foot forward this school year by shopping at John's for your back-to-school foot care needs. From toddlers to college students, have your child looking smart in a pair of Hush Puppies, Sperry, Easy Strider brand styles, and many more. Durable and sharp, the kids will step with confidence all year. Need socks and a belt? We've got you covered. And don't forget a new backpack and lunch containers. You can find all this and more at the best prices and customer service in town at John's on Rosetta Street and Carmichael Road. John's, we put fashion at your feet. Okay, school bag, books, pencils, uniform, oh lord, and I gotta buy snacks too? Just lay it on the, line. the Guardian Media Group and AML Foods want to help families in need with our first ever Back to School Snackathon. What's a snackathon? Well, we want to help by assisting in donating school snacks to children that may need them as they head back to school this year. To be a part of our Snackathon, all you have to do is shop at your favorite Solomon Superstore or Fresh Market. At the store, you can donate your pre-existing loyalty points or you can donate cash directly at the register. Every single penny will go towards purchasing snacks that will be donated for distribution by the Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger. Together, we can ensure that every child that opens their backpack this year will have a snack and a smile. Get involved, get involved. Get 
Grab your camera, capture the spirit of the Bahamas, and win cash and prizes. Scotiabank, in partnership with the Guardian Media Group, invites all youth, amateur, and professional photographers to enter the Celebrate Bahamas 50 photography competition, being held under the theme One Nation, One Legacy, Our Future. With more than $8,000 in cash to be won, snap those photos and send them in by August 30th. Visit guardiantalkradio.com or bs.scotiabank.com to find out how to enter. Let's celebrate our proud nation in photos. Terms and conditions apply. Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all topped with velvety whipped cream and irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. As a parent and pediatrician, I know how important it is to keep our little ones up to date with their childhood immunizations. When your little ones are immunized, they have protection against diseases like measles, whooping cough, and polio, which has a treatment or cure. When the immunized child is exposed to the germs that cause these diseases, their immune system is prepared to fight immediately, preventing sickness and even death. Parents have been doing this for years to protect their children. Now it's your turn to keep your little one safe. Vaccines are essential for new and returning students. As you begin back-to-school preparations, ensure that your children's vaccinations are up to date. All vaccines are available at all public health clinics. This message is brought to you by PAHO WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and USAID. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Talking Heads with Nazi is brought to you by ML Foods Limited, the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Naughty Journeys, Percy's Island Games, Scotia Bank, and Tropical Gyros. On the Friday, August 11th edition of Talking Heads, your boy Naughty and your company right up until 6. We're talking sports now. We're into the 5 o'clock hour, and of course, you know, we got to set it off with today in sports history. I'll brought you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's, and I'm sure Pearly will be chiming in, and we'll hear from Pearly if he hasn't chimed in already. And Pearly's got some breaking news for the home court, all right? The, the, the local sports scene brought to you by Burger King. That's coming up right after this. But uh, today in Sports History, I'll brought you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. Don't forget, happy hour tonight, 5 to 7 p.m. at Naughty Johnny's. Be sure to check them out on that. And don't forget, uh, tomorrow, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All, all weekend long, as a matter of fact, Saturday and Sunday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Naughty Johnny's. Breakfast starting at 9 a.m. Listen here, that, 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 that boiled fish. <laughs> and a stew conk off the chain. They got some wicked omelets down there, too. So you definitely want to check them out on all that goodness. All right. But here's what happened on this day in Sports History. 1971, on August 11, 1971, Harmon Killebrew of the Minnesota Twins got his 500th and 501st home runs of his Major League Baseball career. At the time, he was only the 10th player to reach 500 career home runs. 
1984, Carl Lewis won his fourth gold medal in the 1984 Summer Olympics. In 1984, also, the Cincinnati Reds honored Major League All-Star and Hall of Fame catcher Johnny Bench by retiring his uniform number, number five. In 2015, for the first time in history, all 15 Major League Baseball host teams won their games. And I don't know why they put this to the very end. I think there might have been an omission, but in 1929... Uh, Babe Ruth hit his 500th career home run on this day. So let that not be forgotten. And also a little tidbit for Pearlie. The first Major League Baseball game to be televised in color was broadcast between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Boston Braves. The Dodgers won 8-1. to one. Dodgers. All right. Leaders. Here's your sports quote of the day. You learn you can do your best even when it's hard, even when you're tired and maybe hurting a little bit. It feels good to show some courage. Joe Namath. And that's a wrap on today in sports history, all brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. And now let's get up into the home court, and, uh, you know, the local sports scene. And uh, it's all brought to you, of course, by Burger King Nassau and that Independence Whopper. So we got Pearly chimed in. We got Pearly there? we right there. we right there. What you got for me, Pearly? I, I know you told me we got some breaking news locally, so lay it on me. Obviously, this just broke over the last couple of minutes, over the last couple of hours. Well, you know... People like calling me. I ain't gonna brag. But anyway, you know that we had an incident with the Babe Ruth baseball Correct. classic. Correct. We spoke um, about it on the show. Well, the B- BBA met. After doing his due diligence, his full investigation, talking to all parties concerned, has sent down some suspensions. Now, this is from the for the BBA, the Bahamas Baseball Association. Correct. Yes. That the, governing body. That's, that's the body, body that's metting out the, 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 the penalties now, correct? Yes. So now the incident was uh, uh, involving one of the coaches, Greg Burroughs Jr., and a umpire out of, I think, Curacao, if I'm correct. The BBA has ruled that Greg Burroughs Jr. will be suspended from all baseball activities, international or local, from playing coaching, executive, organizing, being any part of any international baseball or anything baseball, outside of their private freedom farm is not involved. That's out. But he's suspended for 15 years. He can appeal his suspension not before but after 10 years. His father, Greg Burris Sr., as commissioner of the B uh, Baseball Association, an organizer and overall in charge of it um, was out of order in terms of threatening or going to the senior umpire and telling him he will be put out of the out of the stadium. He will have him removed out of the stadium if he doesn't reinstate his son, which is really unbecoming of sportsmanship. And Greg was suspended for five years. So senior got five. Now, the, letter, the letter that's and going junior on. Junior got is fifteen. Senior. Yes, I have had conversations with members of the BBA. The letter that's going on is not the official letter, but the content of it will stand once the official letter is sent out, uh, properly advising them of their suspension. And somebody leaked the letter. They, they did their full investigation. Found out who leaked the letter. They're dealing with that internally. But um, so the bottom line is Greg Burris Jr. But his, uh, and he's, he's and, and, and one thing people, people were saying, I want to be clear. People are saying, oh, you need to wait because they have a court thing coming up. That ain't got nothing to do with it. They're not even checking whether he punched the guy or not. That's between him and the umpire. What they're suspending him for is cursing and carrying on at the umpire, threatening the umpire, and throwing a water bottle and some other things at the umpire. So he's suspended on those grounds. My inside sources tell me that many of the executives and people around the table with that was calling for a lifetime suspension. But the B3As felt that 15 years would be a strong enough suspension to send a strong message that this will not be tolerated in baseball. This will not, particularly in the front of our youth. And his father for not, and, and, and I, I, I ain't going to say what I can say, it changed my mind. His father for getting involved in it will be suspended for five years. So that's the hand down for that. Um, I think that should, hopefully that will clear up this nasty mess. There are other implications to it. It doesn't affect his, because, you know, Greg, seeing those own Freedom Farm doesn't affect Freedom Farm. Freedom Farm can sell up there. 
regular season and all that, but they can't have no internationally sponsored events, anything like that he would be involved in. Secondly, the Babe Ruth Association or the Babe Ruth has not... That was my next have, question. They also have... they. What they do is on them. They This is what the BBA has done in, 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 according, in accordance with international rules. And Babe Ruth still has the rule on that as well. So that could be something else. So... You know, I think he, they own or they are the, the franchisees of the Babe Ruth tournament here. And so that puts a, that puts another spoke in their wheel in that terminology because Babe Ruth will not be able to come here under their auspices. So that's it in the bottom line. BBA stepped up and, 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 and in, some, in some words from a fellow, one of the people I, I talked to found some testicular fortitude. And, um, and, and that's not me. That's somebody that's quoted that to me. And saying that they finally some discipline in sports. Some real discipline in sports and strong messages sent down that we come here to teach and we come here to develop a sport. We came here to develop young people and we're not going to let this be tolerated by people who don't want to rule. Now, of course, you know, I, I would reach out to both senior and junior to get their comments on this once they've officially I, I been would, served. I would, I would, yes, I would, I would recommend that. I've also um, spoken in to some of objectivity and invite them on the show so... Um, probably early in the week, um, somebody from the BBA will come onto the show to give a full explanation of what went down and how it happened. Perfect. So, you know, total transparency on this, because obviously at the end of the day, we don't want the sport of baseball to suffer in this country. It suffered long enough. It got rejuvenated, and, and it has some issues as it is right now that, that needs to be dealt with. We don't yes. need something like this on top of it, so I'm glad it's been dealt with, and now we need to focus on, on moving forward. You know, and, and, you know, baseball is growing in this country. And you and I just spoke about uh, Sebastian Walcott and the big contract he signed with the Texas Rangers and the high hopes they have on this guy. As the, and they're saying the terminology, the next Jazz, will not be in play in another few years because it'll be the next Sebastian. So, and with the, and the success Jazz is having with the Miami Marlins, we're seeing growth, growth in baseball. We're seeing things happening for a, a 400,000 na people nation, bringing out 20-plus professional baseball players right now. That's, that's a blessing, man. Yep, it is. And, and over 40 in the pipeline. And, and, and to come through, exactly. You know, and, and you, look I, at, you look at Sebastian Walcott, he didn't go through the, I'm drafted, and he got signed on an international contract, which gave him a couple of dollars to, you know, to, to change the life of him and his family. And I'm so happy for them. I am too. And I, saw, and I actually personally witnessed the hard work Sebastian put in many a day. All right? Okay. So... Yeah, and so now God is rewarding him at 17 years old. So you know we gotta, we gotta, we can't, you know, let things like this would go on down. Tampa will happen in baseball and discourage with baseball. Cause I ain't want to send my son out there, my grandson out there. If I see things going on, cause I, I gonna fear for his safety. So I'm happy that this gotta get him on T ball. You just get him on T ball. I know where to send him. Let's go to the phone lines. We got a call, Pearly. Talking heads. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Talking heads. Well, I, I guess the caller wasn't patient enough. You can call us back, you know, caller. We'll take your call. It's not a problem. When I talk, I talk long sometimes. Yeah, you just go long. But you are right with me. Because I just go long, too. <laughs> you know what? We're on national radio, okay? I was talking about my verbal prowess. And now, my other prowesses, they're just as long as my verbal. So, yeah, I'm consistent. All right. <laughs> I got you. But I Pearly, let's, I, let's go back to the phone lines. Mr. Producer, let us know if that caller calls back. Um, but, but Pearly, I, I look at it now, and it's not just baseball. We've seen this rear its ugly head in other sports disciplines. On the international level, athletes getting in with the coaches, coaches making decisions that, that, that has fallout. So hopefully this might be a catalyst, not just for baseball, but for other sports to pull up their bootstraps and get things and you in know, order. Look, the Big Three A's had a little thing last week where they announced the suspension of one of the track athletes and they, and they then rescinded the suspension. But there are some, I understand that we'll be hearing some more on that from the BBAs, whether or not necessarily on that particular incident, but 
on some internal changes that the BBA, the B3A should be doing to make sure that discipline is there in track and field as well. Well, we need to get them all in order. Yes. And all right, that's listen, listen. Gonna... You ain't saying you ain't gonna have route. You can have route. Baseball is a route. You know, the manager come up then they route them by kick kick dirt on the on the on the plate and stuff. Yeah, that has happened. The Billy Martins who would pull the base up and throw it down the field. Yeah, that has happened. And that's part of the I think that kind of stuff is part of baseball, but not cursing the man dirty and throwing water but no man. That's an assault. That, 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 that's 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 assault. You can't be doing that. It can't be to that level. No. You gotta be able to have a cooler head. Particularly so you're telling me, if nothing was done about that, kids see that happen, they can believe they could pull that stunt in the game? Man. You see that happen? Trust me. That that would not happen anywhere else. The message has it been sent. It would escalate to that point. The message has been sent. Jump Froggy, you will be out. If you want to mess up your career, if you want to mess up your opportunity to be in the big leagues, that on you. We'll see. I, I, Pearly, listen to me. I, I just think we need to get over this, carry on bad spirit that we have sometimes. I mean, that we need it to be competitive, but we can't use it to the point where it becomes a detriment. And, and, and trust me on this good baseball players are all over the U.S. in the thousands. All over the Caribbean, Dominican Republic, Cuba, and the Cubans are coming out. When I say coming out, and getting out of Cuba to come play baseball. So the competition level is higher. I know of friends who, is, who got opportunities to be in the minor leagues and cut up and get sent home. And they were talented ball players. And, 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 you know, if you really want there's some who are talented and gone out there and had added to it and were home and never got the opportunity to hit the big, the big leagues and do stuff because of, not because they couldn't do it, because they couldn't play, they could play. I know they talk, they talk of a particular ball player that we have that was so good. One of the Hall of Fame, the, I think the guy may be a Hall of Fame now, but he was definitely on championship teams in Cincinnati and Houston. Championship teams playing championship ball. And this brought up, this behavior was starting over him every day. But that guy made it to the majors and made it big. My behemoth guy got to come home. And you know what? It's attitude is what a lot of these foreign coaches look at. You can yep. be a stud player, but if you got a bad attitude, they might look to the player who might be just a little bit less than you, but got a better attitude. Jazz and is a can't... prime example of what we want. He brings the talent to the state and he brings the attitude. He works hard. He's pleasant. And he having fun. He makes you. He, he I... makes you want to come watch the Miami Marlins play. And I could tell you something. To hear you say that made my mind run on my good friend, the late Frankie Simmons, who was Jazz's initial coach at that early age, yeah. and instilled it in him. And that's some of the same things that he said. He always had the right attitude and the right work ethic. And that's what people got to remember. You could have a great work ethic. You could hit the snot off the ball. You could throw 100 miles an hour. If your attitude sucks, you're not going anywhere. Exactly. And you should look at, at the pro ranks. Look at Antonio Brown as a prime example. Mm -hmm. Just there's no reason for him not to be in the NFL right now. Probably. He could still be playing football. And be, be a productive as well. Game, but out of it. God. And, and you know, I look, it, it, it's important to have attitude, to have some of your swag. You know, but yeah, you, you got to control swag, it. Swag. Attitude is different. Correct. So, you know, we'll see how it pans out and how it affects baseball over the, the, the near and distant future. Yeah. But um, good stuff there, Purdy, getting it as it broke and then getting on top of it, too, because a lot of times we have sensitive information leaked in this country and, you know, it gets to the wrong people and it's dispersed the wrong way and the wrong message is put out. 
So I'm glad you were on top of that to identify that the BBA had identified the leak and then being proactive, getting the statement out. And here we are. That's why I made sure when I saw this, I said, oh, I said, let me make a call. Let me confirm some things because I want to open up a mouth and then cause, you know, the white call me and actually we'll be talking about. Correct. Because you know you're caught. At least that. For sure, you'll text you now. That's the tax king. But, so let's hope, you know, that um, this is a message, a nice, strong message sent, and and, and that it, the baseball recovers from this and that it we move forward in, in developing our athletes and getting one or two more players in the majors in Dodger Blue or Yankee Pinstripe. And to see, you know, Jazz come back the way he's been coming back third time for the year. He's come off the injured list. But um, he did his thing. Yeah. He had a home run. Back pinch it in. Up. All right. And it brought the Marlins to win 5-2. And they went on to lose to the Reds by the same score. But obviously, he's been productive. Now, that was in his first game back. But on Tuesday and Wednesday... The Marlins won by a single run both days, taking the middle game 3-2 on Tuesday and winning 5-4 on Wednesday. And both teams are right in the thick of things in the wild card race in the National League. Yeah, they both the Marlins are 16-56. And they battling for that last spot. Yeah. And Jazz is hitting 251, 11 home runs, 25 RBIs. He's got 15 stolen bases and 21 runs scored, 24 runs scored. Respectable, considering he's been injured for the majority of the season. Yep, yep, yep. You know, I'm just hoping that when Hank break out the checkbook this off season, Hank break out the trade book too. <laughs> he would look so good in New York in pinstripes right there. My God. And it's short too. But then again, he'd look nice in Santa too. Reminiscent of Bernie Williams out there. Because Bernie could track it out there. So what? I can let you Bernie me. Williams I can can't you get bright. no props from you, Pearly? I can let you, Brian. Bernie Williams can't get no props from you? Baseball purist? No, no. I'm not Bernie Williams one of the greatest ever. And nobody would have thought Bernie would have been Bernie boy. Because if you look at him, you didn't think he was good for it. Like boy, he was good. Huh? You look at him, you didn't think he was that good. No, sir. But boy, he could play it off. That was kind of like it. Ron Say, the penguin from the Dodgers. You look at him at his yeah. bow legs, you didn't think he could do nothing. But boy, well, he, he, he was a good one. And he a hit. Ron Say, the penguin. <laughs> so, Purdy, what your Dodgers could do? I think it's time you, it's safe, it's safe you could start talking now because you, you go into the postseason. Yankees aren't. Listen to me. Kershaw came back last night. Gave me five, six strong innings, gave up one run. Looked good. Curve, uh, curve ball was, was okay. Change up was a little shaky. But they had a good pitch out of the Dodgers. Um, Yarbrough, who picked up, came back and gave me some shutout innings. Got Gosselin came in and shut the door at the ninth inning. Muncie had a home run to tie it. Muncie got walked, the bases loaded to put us up 2-1, and Dodgers took that one last night. We've been in games we supposed to win. We've beaten our division rivals. So every time we play them, we put them a game behind. You're doing what you you're supposed it. to do. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the Yankees are free falling. I got hit. Can't pitch. Can't do, Can't do nothing. Like. Can't get out of their own way. You know. Boy, I tell you, American League looks like but, the Orioles, not, Rangers, Twins, Rays, Astros, and Blue Jays. And, 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 and over in the, in the National. You're only five games out of the playoffs, what, you know? Yeah, but I'm looking at the teams in front of us. The you Red Sox, Mariners, and Blue Jays Sox, all so playing better play baseball than us. And you got Toronto. Teams, you got to play in front of you. And you got the Angels nipping at our heels. And they've been stinking it up. They're game and a half behind. Be free falling, buddy. Over in the National League, you got the Braves, the Dodgers, the Brewers, the Phillies, the Giants, the Marlins, 
actually playoff teams. But the Cubs and the Reds are only half game back. We only only put four games behind the Braves. A couple games behind the Braves are best record. Yeah, that's true, too. Let's four see. on the men call them. The Braves are 72 and 41. And you guys are 68 and 46. You like I said, in the, in the men call them, only four games behind them in the men call them. So let's see what you all can do. No, I like, I, I, you know, you can show my face. I've only been 111 games last year, but I think this is Dave, one of Dave Roberts' better coaching jobs. And I think this is a better team than last year. Team, a more complete team in terms of the bullpen is, is clicking. The, the 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 rookies who had to come in and fade did fare well. And the new the newbies, the Rosario, the Rosario, the Rosario and, and and Kiki and Nendez coming back and Peralta coming coming in and, and the rookie out men. They 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 have been playing great role players. Of course, Mookie and Free leading the, leading the the way, but the role players are coming up with timely hits. Peralta came up with the key hits to beat. Arizona in last game, and then last night, Muncie. So you got to give credit to that. I think he's doing a good job of coaching. He's doing a good job of balancing. I thought last year he was flipping the lineup too much. This year, one two five or one two four to 5 has been consistent. And then he bring in Rosario for left-hand pitches and all that. He's been matching up well. So I can't complain. Boy, I just saw something come across the wire, Pearlie. Devontae Adams injured. Who? Devontae Adams. Wide receiver from the Raiders. Mm. Injured in practice today. They had a scrimmage against the 49ers. And apparently there was a collision with him and linebacker Oren Burks. And uh, he had to be helped off the field. Um, He sustained a lower left leg injury and limped off. Oh boy! Later on, they they were saying that he avoided a serious injury. Okay. Um, but he's going to be monitored, so he's probably going to be shut down for the rest of the preseason, depending on what the injury is. And they haven't said sense. exactly what it is. So, sounding like a knee lower leg injury, that's probably a, could be a hammy, it could be an ankle sprain, a knee twist. As long as they say they're saying, it could the be a no it Could be could be a myriad of things. All right, break early. And then on the flip side of the break, we'll wrap things up. We'll get our picks in because uh, on the take home today, we got Colin Cowherd and some NFL news. And, uh, you know, All right. he says the Browns are considered underrated, but don't sleep on the Browns that they might make some noise. And here's something that, yeah, okay. boy, I tell you, Colin one clickbait on a Friday. But listen, there's something coming out of Denver that Sean Payton is really dropping the hammer and the starters are actually going to play all preseason, including this first game, even if it's a series or two, he's starting from scratch. As bad as they look last year, they need to play. I don't know what he could do, though, because all his wide receivers injured. Mm. So, and the running game... Dan, like I told you, all, Denver could be the worst team in that division again this year. Inclusive of the Raiders. So. I don't think so. Well, anyway, we'll hear what Colin got to say on the, on the take home today for sure. On, on the final 10. All right, so let's get into that first break. Flip side of the break, we'll be back. We'll uh, you know, let you know our Major League picks will be like tonight. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, yeah, we'll get to the break. We'll get to the break. On flip side of the break, we'll tell you who we like tonight for our pro picks. Brought to you, of course, by the Allen Game. It's all going down right after the break, right here, as the Friday, August 11th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all topped with velvety whipped cream and irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together. 
and we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey for every infusion and follow-up for every step of the way. For every care in the world, Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Are you dreaming of the perfect summer getaway? Apply for a debt consolidation or win an airline ticket to Paris, Miami, or New York. Win up to $2,500 in cash and more. For details, call 356-7764 for Nassau, 602-6811 for Freeport, 823-4374 for Abaco. We're gonna give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenton Plan, Island Game keep you with it. Percy Fenton Plan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Fenton Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Fenton Plan, from the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, come play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Island game. Okay, school bag, books, pencils, uniform, oh lord, and I gotta buy snacks too? Just lay it on the, line. the Guardian Media Group and AML Foods want to help families in need with our first ever Back to School Snackathon. What's a snackathon? Well, we want to help by assisting in donating school snacks to children that may need them as they head back to school this year. To be a part of our Snackathon, all you have to do is shop at your favorite Solomon Superstore or Fresh Market. At the store, you can donate your pre-existing loyalty points or you can donate cash directly at the register. Every single penny will go towards purchasing snacks that will be donated for distribution by the Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger. Together, we can ensure that every child that opens their backpack this year will have a snack and a smile. Get involved, get involved. Hey, it's your boy Charlie Bahama, and let me tell you about a deal you can't afford to miss. It's the two fly free from Nassau promotion. You heard me right. Two people can fly free from Nassau. Just go to BahamasResidence.com for all the details so you can start your vacay today. There are 10 participating islands with 35 amazing hotels to choose from. You can go to Abaco, Acklands, Andrus, Bimini, Cat Island, Eleuthera, Harbor Island, Exuma, Long Island, or San Salvador. There's so much to do on all these islands, you just may want to go to a few. And why not? With the two fly free from Nassau deal, it's like getting an island for free. Take your family, go with friends. Arrange a fun out of the box business meeting or retreat. Your co workers or employees will love you. Or go on an adventure with the guys. Or a girl's getaway from the guys. Or a romantic trip for two. Whatever you do, you'll thank me. Visit BahamasResidence.com for more information. That's BahamasResidence.com. Juicy fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, and a hot buttery biscuit for only $5. That's genius. Part of the KFC Genius menu, the KFC $5 snack box delivers on flavor and value. Need to feed more than one? KFC's Great Picks has got you covered. Packed with four thighs and four legs, fried to golden perfection, plus four buttery biscuits for only $20. More genius. Hungry for deals? The Genius Menu at KFC. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. On the Friday, August 11th edition of Talking Heads, Pearly, Pearly Pearl, we have Pearly. We got Pearly or we lost Pearly? Pearly muted itself again. Anyway, let me read these texts. Listen, Naughty, please tell Pearly stay away from the air fryer and eat it on this show. It sound bad, man. I can hear him chomping on them wings. <laughs> Naughty, tell your friend 
I ain't going to call him your broadcast partner. All his players are coming back, and the choke is also coming back for the Dodgers. They done. <laughs> for the Texans who asked me what the answer was to the trivia, it was an answering machine. A phone answering machine? Yeah, that was the answer. Bernie, I don't know if you heard them last two texts, but there's getting off on you, man. What'd they say? I, I missed it because I got cut off the show. What'd they say? They say, one text to say, tell Pearly step away from the air fat fryer and put the chicken wing down. He could hear, or they could hear you chomping on them chicken wing all over the airways. Honey garlic, honey garlic. I knew that was coming. And this one, you'd be particularly interested. And listen to the wording on this. Hey, Naughty, tell your friend. I refuse to call him your broadcast partner. All his players are coming back, and the choke is coming back with them for the Dodgers. They're done. Keyword choking, so we know that's Jeff. That's fine, Jeff. You old Yankee. You will have to make the playoffs. There. I said it. <laughs> I can't get over step away from the air fat fry and put the chicken wing down. I really don't appreciate that so much, you know, because suddenly they're jealous. They want some of my chicken wing. Swing on through, I'll feed you. <sighs> All right, Pearly. Listen, we got saw, four uh, minutes before we got to get to the was, break. But, for to the, to take us slipping, home. Before we get to the picks, I just throw this one out, Chad. I was flipping through the sports channels yesterday, and I saw this um, interview with Ron Rivera, who said that a okay. number of the Washington Guardian players are coming and complaining to him that Eric the enemy is too hard on them. And these sportscasters proceeded to rip a new one into Ron Rivera and say, he's too too long a veteran coach to bring that dirty luxury out. Too much to be, you don't talk them kind of things in the public like that. Sound like you got a problem with the enemy. Sound like you got a problem with the enemy. What they were getting with Eric the enemy, he is a tough coach. He was tough in Kansas City. And, he, and he's a tough coach, and he's tough on them. And if they can't take the chase for they need to be in the NFL. That's it. You got to be tough now. If you can't, that, that boy, how man be pamby are these dudes these days? He working me too hard in in, in, in preseason, in training camp. <laughs> you know, when you're what supposed you to work hard. But what have you won? I got two. I got several NFL titles and 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 division titles and all that. What have you won? Better exactly. Sit down, and learn something. sit down and learn something. All right. I like the Rays over the Guardians today. I like the you Marlins like the over the, the Yankees the today. The Guardians, the, Guardians, the Guardians won last night. I like the Rays to come back today, though. Okay. All right. I like the Marlins over the Yanks. I like the Phillies over the Twinkies. Okay. I like the Nationals over the A's because they suck a little like, bit less like than the any, A's. Anybody who played the A's, I like it over them. The Pirates and the Reds. Pirates been playing hard ball. They're playing, they're playing good ball. They gave Atlanta a good run for that money. They played Atlanta tough. I like the Pirates tonight too. I like the Pirates tonight too. I like the Blue Jays over the Cubs. I like the Red Sox over the Tigers. I like the Braves over the Mets. The Brewers over the White Sox. Royals over the Cardinals. Astros the over the Angels. Over the Cardinals tonight. Uh, yeah. Kid was got Royals bringing on a rookie tonight with a 10-point ERA. Don't worry. That kid throw in. Rain Wright. I go in with, I go in with Rain Wright tonight. I like the Cardinals over the Royals tonight. I can challenge you on that one. All right. I like the Astros over the Angels. I like the Padres over the Diamondbacks. That's because like Snell pitching Mariners. for the Padres. And, so Snell needs that win. I like the Mariners over the Orioles. Hell and I like the, the Dodgers Gibson, over Gibson the Rockies. Gibson tonight for the Bulls. Gibson tonight the night for Baltimore. Baltimore can beat, beat the Mariners tonight. We'll see. But anyway, probably we got to go. The break okay, time bro. is here. Have a great weekend. Let's Everybody give, chimed you know, in. Some, some, some preseason football on tonight. So those, those Dolphin fans, you know. Yes, sir. Who are listening? You can, can turn tune in tonight and watch some preseason football. Falcons and there the Dolphins tonight. All right. 
All right. So have a great weekend, Bahamas. Be safe. Be good. And if you can't be good, be good at it. And we'll see you Monday right here on Talking Heads. Pretty be safe, my brother. Enjoy your weekend. Ciao. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Want to reach your Grand Bahama customers? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Nassau Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Right, Eric Mangini now joins us live. He is based right now in Cleveland, Ohio. Of all the places, he picked Cleveland. He loves Cleveland. He's a (laughs) Cleveland man. Through and through. There's no reason to make Cleveland jokes. It's a fine city. Fine city. Colin, you started off with a little parenting advice. They don't hate you. They're just disappointed. <laughs> that is that is the classic parenting line. And then very, very good. I, I was taking notes. It was great stuff. Well, I appreciate that. So I will say he's not as likable, but I keep reading all these NFL preview magazines. Everybody loves Cleveland. You're there. You get to see it. Am I nuts here? What? Are they a potentially AFC championship level team? Yeah, they're underrated, and and here's why: Deshaun Watson has benefited from the attention that Aaron Rodgers has gotten, the attention that Russell Wilson has gotten. Everybody forgets that that he was an elite quarterback, and a few years ago he was throwing 33 touchdowns and seven picks. He had a 112 quarterback rating, and the difference between him and those other guys is he's 28 years old. He's in the prime of his career. Now he's moved a year away from, from the, all the offseason problems. He's got six games in the system. He's got a full offseason uh, w- with the team. There, there's so many things that are pointing in the direction of, of him being able to get back to that form that, that he was in. And, and now the Browns added a, a veteran defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, who I like a lot. They've still got the great offensive line, great offensive line coach, and uh, and they've got so many so many pluses going for them, and they're they're somewhat under the radar compared to a lot of teams we talk about. So I know it's not everything, but because starters don't play, first of all, preseason's a game shorter. Fewer starters are playing since McVeigh decided to not play anybody, and it worked. So practice feels like to me, especially inter squad practices, feel like a bigger deal today. A one versus ones don't you don't get a lot of that in practice, and I think I I talked to a couple coaches about this. Like practice now is a little bit bigger deal. So when Dak's out there throwing bad picks off last year, it feels like something. He's not a rookie, and I saw the footage of him. And Eric, some are bad. Some are like staring people down. What do you make of it? I don't love it. I don't love it. I I don't think that you can just turn things on and off. And and even though you stand up in front of the media and say, I'm not going to throw interceptions like I threw last year, I didn't love the way he even answered that question where he kind of threw the receivers under the bus where he said that this year the receivers will be in the right spots. It wasn't even like he took full accountability for for the picks that that he did throw last year. And, and, And that's not a good thing. I don't like the way the DBs respond to him when he throws a pick. It almost feels, it doesn't feel like just trash talk. It felt more disrespectful than that. Yeah. So that's not the most encouraging thing in the world either. And and we can say that practice isn't important, but it is. And and if you're consistently making those mistakes in practice, odds are you're, you're going to make them the game. And, and as much as you want to talk about 
the improvements you've made, you, you need to show those improvements on a consistent basis. So we, we said this at the top of uh, end of last hour, is that when you've got a young quarterback, I think you can identify pretty quickly the wow factor, Herbert, Lamar, Mahomes. I, I don't think it would have taken you long to go, okay, this is just different, right? I'm watching Lamar. I went back this morning. I got up really, really early, and I got up this morning, and I went back and watched his rookie year highlights. <laughs> he was so fast. It didn't even look. It was, like, it was like he was speeding up the video when he was flying past linebackers and corners. So the wow is pretty obvious. So if you don't have wow, the question becomes, how does the grading scale go? So Daniel Jones' number, our staff did a good job. They kind of they put it on the screen. And he completed like 67% of his throws. Passer rating low 90s. Didn't throw a lot of touchdowns, but he didn't make any mistakes. And I said on the air, I think if you give me that, I probably keep him. He's not losing games. You tell me if Jordan Love gave you the Daniel Jones numbers. 15 touchdown passes in 2023 is half of what I want. Do you just do you just say he's not losing me games? Well, my my experience with Tom Brady is his first year there was there was no wow. If anything, it was it was the opposite at all, and he didn't have to play. And and then when when he gets the opportunity to play, it was okay. It was okay, and he consistently got better. So guys can improve that that position, and and I, I've seen it and and witnessed it firsthand. Now, the difference is with, with Jordan Love, he's been there. He's been in the system. He's had the time to sit and watch. The expectation there is much, is much higher. Tom was a sixth-round draft pick. Jordan was a first-round draft pick. You've got $40 million in dead money for, for Aaron Rodgers, and, and you've given up so much to create this opportunity for him. The expectations are a little bit different. Now, if, if, the, if the ceiling that you get this year is he doesn't get you beat, Okay, you're 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 banking on on the fact that next year it's going to pop, and now he's going to be able to start winning games. But the equation is different because how long he's been there, and how much they've given up, and and how many uh, how much more experience he has than than young guys that just get thrown into the fire. Yeah, and there's no chaos there, so it's a well-run organization. So um, I, I, I watch the story of, and I've said this, the only thing I worry about with Aaron, it's not the media, it's not Sala, it's, it's the O-line. He's going to be 40 in December. Old quarterbacks don't like to get hit. They don't know what their tackle situation is. If Dwayne Brown doesn't give you 17 games and plays 12, they, this could be a mess on the edges. By the way, Buffalo twice, Patriots, Patriots were third in sacks, Bills pass rush, they play the Eagles, Denver, the Chargers. Browns, there's a lot of pass rushes. They played Kansas City, Chris Jones. So my question is, um, when, when, I, when you look at the Jet situation, you had Favre, he was an older quarterback. And Favre's early career, he was run around Brett Favre, the gunslinger, the ad liver. But when you got him, and, 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 and contrast that or, or compare it to Aaron, did Favre not want to get hit as much? Did you notice, like, where as an old quarterback coming to the Jets, how did he look at O-line play, getting hit, ad-libbing? Well, we had a really good offensive yes, line. Yes, you had DeBrickishaw. We, we, we had DeBrickishaw Ferguson. We had Nick Mangold, who was, was excellent. We brought in Alan Fanica. We had Damian Woody. We, we, we had a really, really good offensive line when he got there. And, and the Jets are taking some hits on their offensive line. I, I understand that. But it's not like they haven't put resources into it. Two of the offensive linemen are among their top five highest paid players right now with Dwayne Brown, Lake, and Tomlinson. And then they drafted two guys, number one, in, or in the first round. And they drafted a second rounder. So they put resources in it. It just hasn't, very, it hasn't been very productive because of injuries, continuity, all those things. Now, the, the good news for them, too, is... People are going to play Aaron Rodgers differently. They should. The Jets should be able to run the ball effectively because of how many seven-man boxes that they have. They're going to get. Uh, Brees Hall is 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 good. That just takes some pressure off of, of Aaron as well. And Aaron's smart. Aaron's going to get the ball out quickly. He's not going to take the hits that that some younger guys would take. Where it could kill him, Colin, is when the whole world knows you have to pass in those two-minute situations. If you if you got to go no huddle, you're down by a lot. 
that's where you can really get exposed. If they can manage the games, then, then the exposure is much smaller. So I, tonight, Denver plays. Sean Payton has said we want to give him some reps. So speaking of O-line, the first thing Payton did, Mike McGlinchey, Ben Powers, they upgraded the O-line. They get their left tackle back. So I think Denver's O-line will be the most improved part of the team beyond the coach. Um, what's realistic for Russell? I, he's lost a little weight. I just want to see him move more. Because, you know, it's funny last year. I, I have this theory on it is that he got the big contract, and he thought to himself, hey, I'm not going to be run around guy like these young guys. I'm a veteran now. I got the bag. I want to sit in the pocket and show I can do this. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you got to lean into your fastball. You're a mover. That was my takeaway on it. So what do you want to see? What do you expect to see? Um, there is so much truth in what you're saying, man. And the old ad is you see a lot of good young quarterbacks but not a lot of good old ones right. because of how much they get hit. And when guys get paid a ton of money, they want to see that contract through with and make sure they earn every dollar. And they're not doing that when they're running on a ton. But you're absolutely right, too, about the fact that his greatest asset wasn't always scrambling. It was his ability to buy time. Yeah. So with the way that he can make defensive line move, uh, miss and, and extend plays, he has to lean back into that. Or, or else he, he's not going to be the, the guy he was, and, and, and teams aren't going to treat him the same. He's going to get different type of rush patterns and blitzes. So yeah, lean into it. at least lean into it early, so that everybody now is worried about it and and, and game planning for it. And then you can pull back some. My fear there, column too, is how quickly he picks up the system. A lot of shifting, motioning, multiple personnel groups. It's it's very different than than what he's dealt with in the past. And it's going to be interesting to see where that landing spot is between, that, as Sean said, his greatest hits and the things that Sean wants to do with, with the offense he brought in. So you were the Niner defensive coordinator and the Patriot defensive coordinator. And the one thing Belichick does, and I think they do it, uh, and you were part of this, and you can explain it as well as anybody. I didn't care much about C.J. Stroud last night. What I noticed was, even with their backups, they just create constant pressure and chaos. It's just Bill's... I mean, I don't think they have the third best defensive line talent. They were third in the league in sacks. And they're always near the top in pressures and hits, even if they don't get sacks. And I watched that last night. Ball snap, 1,001. The O-line unravels. What is the secret sauce to Bill in that pass rush? Because I don't always think they have the best personnel. Yeah, well, the first thing we always try to do is, is take away what they did last year. Make sure... That, that they play left-handed, and then the second thing is, you're gonna you're gonna identify the greatest weaknesses and make sure that you attack. Them. And, and that seems very simplistic, but not everybody has the, the defensive flexibility to do that. Most teams they have their scheme, they have things in their schemes that can use attack. But in New England, because we had smart players, because we built versatility into everything that we did, and we were so intensely game plan specific. We can exploit other teams. We, we can do that. And we can really effectively take away their strengths so the quarterbacks are sitting back there not getting the normal answers that they get. But it takes time and it takes the right type of guys in, in the room to, to execute that stuff. So, um, so much of a quarterback room. If you've got a star quarterback, it's actually not only is it easier because you have a star, but it's easier because everybody in the room knows he's quarterback one, right? It real clarifies the room. But when you got Brock Purdy, Trey Lance was a number one pick, you bring in Sam Darnold, it's a little bit of a balancing act. They're all a little insecure. Two are coming off injuries. One may get traded. Darnold's a reclamation project. How would you balance, because this is a loaded roster. I mean, there, there, there's nothing in their way outside of quarterback. How do you balance all this stuff? It's, it's actually easier in, in the situation that San Francisco's in now than, than it was when, when Jimmy was there. I, I would imagine it would have been much more awkward when Jimmy was there and you draft Trey Lance. And not only do you draft Trey Lance, but you trade everything away that you did to go get Trey Lance. That, that's an incredibly awkward situation. And Jimmy's extremely well-liked, very popular in the locker room. With the three guys that are there now, 
they're all unproven in their own way. They all have warts in their own way, and they all have really positive things that, that you can cheer for. But from a, a staff perspective and from a team perspective, you can be a lot more objective than if you, you've got a guy you really like, you've done a lot of good things, and suddenly you've got this young guy that hasn't proven anything, and the team wants to thrust them into to a, a starting role. Yeah. All right, Eric Mangini, great seeing you as always. Enjoy Cleveland. How's the weather in Cleveland Thank late you. summer? How is it? Actually, actually, this is one of the best times of year in Cleveland. It's beautiful. The uh, cooling off a little bit, but oh. still very nice. Gets dark late. So when you come to visit, this would be the time of year that you should come visit me, Colin. I know you're. That's on your to-do list. It so. is. I, I have to do a couple things in Manhattan Beach this <laughs> late summer, or else I'd scamper over there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be waiting. All right. Good seeing you, Coach. Um, yeah, I'm so excited for tonight. It's ridiculous. E- even last night, it was after the C.J. Stroud interception. I was like, all right, I got, I got to see some backups. And I saw Malik Cunningham. The the he was a Louisville quarterback. New England got him, and he's he's fun. But I, you know, I look at New England. They're just. I was texting a buddy who's a a Patriot insider last night, and I'm like, man. Malik Cunningham's their most interesting offensive player. <laughs> He's a third-string quarterback. He's probably never going to play. That's the guy I'd want to see on the field. He reminded me a little bit of a poor man's Lamar Jackson. He's not Lamar Jackson, but kind of thin, moves around a lot. Defensively, or, you know, you got to make choices on him. I don't know if he plays, but Bailey Zappi and Malik Cunningham. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is the Guardian News Network Evening Report. I'm Chester Robards. After opposition.